um, the, are we starting, uh, Magdalena? Oh. Magdalena? No, I, I just put the recording back on so I wouldn't forget. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. But anyway, if you all feel comfortable, then I won't, I won't be worried anymore. Um, yeah, well, you know, uh, I think it's it's going to be a little a little bit of uh, uh, slow, I think. But uh, if somebody w needs something from our shops, I think they're going to come and and get it. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different different, you know, when the streets are open and that. But uh, if we survive the COVID with no customers or close, you know. We can survive right. this. We can survive this, and 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 you know what? We have gone through things like that in the, uh, on the street before, and uh, and we're still over here. I think we'll be okay. I'm, I'm talking about a big hole and all the equipment and everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, well, and trying to get into the church has been very interesting sometimes. So yeah, the dust. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, good luck. But thank you anyway for your concern, uh, Bobby. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll address um, her concerns um, when we get to my part in the agenda. So okay. I, I don't want to dismiss what she's, um, you know, concerned about because I think where OCTA is concerned as well, we're and we are taking some steps to um, to mitigate some of the things that we've seen, some of the lessons learned from the other segments. We're bringing into the for and in, down into Forest Street, so I want to make sure everybody hears that message when we are on. Okay. Today. Thank you, Teresa. Thank sure. you, Teresa. So we have, I think we're having problems. People joining the the meeting. Hello, Joe. Good morning, Joe. How are you? He can hear me. Joe might be muted. Maybe he's. I think he is muted. Yeah. So how you been, Teresa? Good. Good. OCTA has got they'll be bringing. Um, you know they've been very conservative at our office in terms of bringing people back in. So we've been waiting to hear where OSHA would finally land, and um, I think we got clarity yesterday. So about 50% of OCTA's workforce will be back in in June, you know, June 28th. And then um, some of us, the rest of us won't be back until full time until uh, September. Oh, nice. Yes. So 50% are working right now only? They will be right now. It's about 25% mm -hmm. um, have been some people have really never left the office. You know, if you work in the copy department or something, obviously you can't work from home. So for those of us who can, they've wanted us to stay at home. Um, and so June 28th, they'll be 50% back. And then oh, okay. Labor Day, everyone comes back. Although we do have a remote work program of which I'm part of. So I, I don't spend um, 40 hours a week in the office. I, I, there is a, you know, a day or two during every week that I'm able to work remotely. But that, but that's only people that work in the office, isn't it? Not not yeah. the workers on the street. So the, the, so, the, so the bus operators they have a different um, protocol. As same thing with the maintenance and safety. So they have been. Some of them have worked, you know, throughout as well because we we have had bus service out on the street, and uh, that continues to increase as the, you know, as businesses open up. We're bringing buses back in as demand warrants. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Sure. Good morning, uh, Julie. Good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Yes. Look, Good morning, Walter, Maria. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so I can say it one time only. We don't have, we don't have a uh, quorum yet. Uh, uh, Magdalena, huh? Do we? We have one. Yeah, I'll one, two. Senora Arellanes is not on the meeting yet. Uh, 
Magdalena? No, she's not. Alfredo's coming in. He, I just, we just got his thing taken care of. Oh, okay. Alfredo. And Char. Dabi. Okay, one, two. We have four. Uh, Mike. Uh, good morning, Mike. Mike. You're mute, Mike. <laughs> We need one more. <laughs> the Raul. Yes, sir. Uh, how is your uh, in one hour parking for the June? The, the, the what? Uh, what the, the, yeah, what is uh, uh, the parking for the public parking? Oh, that would be a question uh, for, uh, for Julie, Walter. Uh, What's your question, Mr. Cha? Yes, uh, hi, good morning, Julie. Uh, Julie, is, uh, we have a uh, still keep the one hour parking for the Santa Ana downtown? Yes, sir. We have a one hour free parking in the structures. Uh, okay. And then after that, it's $1.50 per hour. $1.50 per hour. Uh, uh, I after, got it. Yeah, but the first hour is free. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Magdalena, do we, uh, we have six on the, on, uh, the, and we have we have two more people on the phone. Uh, is that Ala Mesqua? Alfredo? Yes, it looks like you have quorum. It, you have Juan Shaw, Mike Hussein, Kim Tapfer, Lonnie. Um, it's not, let's see. You. And Bobby Rooker. And Bobby Rooker, okay. We have six. Do we have six, uh, Magdalena? Yes. yes. And, and we need six or seven? Six. Okay. okay. Your quorum you should I be press... half plus one. So whatever, however many board members you have plus, so it's half plus one, 50% plus one. Plus one, okay. So we have, we have six, okay. Okay, so good morning, everybody. We're gonna start the meeting. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's approve the minutes from uh, May 21st. Uh, I, want, I wanna correct that uh, on the agenda. I said it's April, but uh, it was May 21st. Uh, and uh, did everybody receive the, the minutes and as they, as they were presented? Yes. Okay, uh, then let's approve the minutes. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Minutes approved. Um, again, uh, I want, I, I'm first on the, on the agenda. I want to report to the board that uh, I submit the, the sidewalk cell uh, to the city. I uh, that was done a couple of weeks ago or last week. I don't remember when, but it was submitted. And uh, I still need to uh, make a plan for the fire department. It was sent today and, uh, and we hope that, uh, that I'm complete on, on the application. And uh, we're just gonna wait and see uh, what's gonna happen with, with this uh, sidewalk cell. I, um, uh, I just found out uh, yesterday that uh, that the license fees in the city they they went up. I thought it was going to be maybe double or you know something something like that, but uh, 
but I was very surprised uh, how much uh, they went up. I'm not sure if that's the correct uh, amount, Julie, or there is something different that I, or there's a mistake on the, on, on, on how much they went up. Uh, Yes, they, they did increase, and um, I believe it's a little over $800 for a special event that has a 1,000 people or less, or up to a 1,000 people. And then if it's more than a 1,000 people, it jumps to 2,700. And um, the specifics on that would be addressed with William McGovern. He's with Santa Ana PD. Those fees were approved by city council um, through the miscellaneous fee schedule. And it's my understanding that PD and several other departments worked on that fee because it, the special event fee used to be $165 or so for years and years and years. It was like an old amount and it didn't cover the cost of all the different review and staff and you know, the different departments that have to be involved with special events. So that's the new amount. And um, if anything else that's more specific, we would have to go through Bill McGovern to get that, those answers. Okay. Um, so $800 for special events. And if it's up, a thousand people, then it's 2,700? No, it's, and don't quote me on the dollar amounts. It's about, it's about $800 for up to a thousand people. And then if it's more than a thousand people, it jumps to 2,700, somewhere along those lines. But again, Raul, what I'm telling you is that we would have to go through Bill McGovern for the specific details. Cause I'm, I wasn't aware of, of the increase until two weeks ago. Okay. Raul? Raul, I'm in the meeting. This is Alfredo. I'm on the phone, okay? okay? Okay, thank you, Alfredo. Thank you for joining the meeting. Okay, okay, Julie. Uh, you know what, Julie? I uh, I moved to you on, the, on uh, three li uh, two lines down. So why don't you go ahead with, you know, whatever you have to report, Julie, please, if you could. Oh, sure. So there's um, special event permits, as I mentioned in the previous meeting, are being accepted by Santa Ana PD. We encourage organizers and organ, you know, organizations like you guys to submit special event uh, applications because they are being reviewed and accepted. This also includes park reservation permits and also film permits. Remember okay. that whenever there's like vendors and such, those vendors have to have a Santa Ana business license. So you will have to go through the business division for that. Uh, and um, the one hour grace period parking, I wanted to provide an update on that. It's, it's been going well because of several factors. A, people are going back into the offices, county and government workers are back in their offices. So it's assisting with more revenue in the parking garages where, you know, we're reopening businesses to a little more normality. And so there's a little more foot traffic in the downtown. Um, also, when we scaled back to the one hour free grace period, instead of two hours, we saw an increase in monthly parking passes. Um, so that's also a positive um, uptick to the revenue. Um, with the increase in revenue for the parking garages and just in general, uh, we're going to be able to increase security guards um, during the weekends, predominantly at night. So instead of just having one security guard every day, we'll have two, but the second one will, will be here on the weekends in the, at night uh, because that's, that's the bigger need. We're also going to be increasing the maintenance staff for the garages, for the parking garages, because of the increase of vandalism, theft, and graffiti. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to share on the parking garages is we are in the middle of a RFP to identify a parking operator for the garages. And the RFP was very, very um, detailed. And uh, there was a lot of requirements in that RFP. So 
want to make sure that we have four security guards, that we have a robust cleaning program, that we have the latest technology, that the garages are clean, and that we provide excellent customer service. Because as you guys have mentioned, they're our primary, uh, they're our first point of interaction with the downtown. So I've taken the feedback that you guys have shared and really taken um, an opportunity to include that in the RFP and the new operator, whoever that is, um, will be responsible for adhering to those requirements. Okay, thank you, Julie, for uh, taking that in, in consideration. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, what about the... What about the police, uh, Julie? Uh, are we going to have police uh, at night? Yeah, there's always been police, Raul, um, as you know. And I want to say that our police officer, Joe Castellanos, might be on this call. He is. Okay, so if you have questions about that, you can address it to him. But in general, there's always been, or not always, um, for the last several years, many years, there's been for dedicated police officers in the downtown area. This is really unique that no other area in the city gets four dedicated police officers like how downtown does. And um, the police officers have adjusted their schedule to be here at nine in the morning. Um, and then they typically work 10 hour shifts unless there's an incident then they stay later. On the weekends, there's an augment of police officers. So instead of having two police officers on the weekends for the nightlife, there's now six. And I, it's my understanding that there will be a seventh police officer on the weekends beginning this weekend. And um, um, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question, Raul. I think you, well, you guys know that there's been police here. Those are really good news to hear, Julie. Seven policemen on the weekends at night. That's beautiful. That's very nice. Thank you. Hey, Raul, uh, if I might just add. Uh, uh, who's this? Can you hear me? This is Joe. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, of course, Joe. Why don't you go ahead and tell us? Uh, okay. Um, I just wanted to add on to what Julie just stated right now. We uh, we did adjust at our time to zero nine 9 in the morning. However, if we have the need to come in earlier, like today and tomorrow, I'm planning on coming in earlier because a lot of the people, a lot of the transit is being camping in the alleys and we're having some issues. Uh, I do come in earlier, adjust our schedule to trying to address those issues. Uh, if you guys have any uh, issues within your areas that you, know, you see uh, homeless people camping or whatever it may be, please bring them to my attention. We are flexible with our time so we can adjust and then, you know, make sure that we take care of those issues. Okay, thank you, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful, right, thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Thank you for uh, that. Raul, I, yes. I wanted to let you know that um, our new corporal, John Kaczorowski, is also on the call. Oh, and he is. If it's okay for him to introduce himself. Of course, yes, welcome. Corporal Kaczorowski, you can go ahead. Make sure to unmute. We can't hear you if you're speaking. Maybe we can come back to him, Raul. Sure, okay. Let's move to the next item. Thank you, Joe, for that report. Raul, really quickly, I did get a letter from uh, Gominski yesterday because he called me um, and uh, he said that um, they 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 have more officers and they're beginning to work downtown till 3 a.m not 2 a.m um, and they're increasing their staffing and they said it's our hope that our involvement in downtown continues to further all of our desires to ensure a vibrant economically successful and safe downtown thank you for all your efforts so oh that's that's good news very good um, thank you is it possible for us to go really quick for through a little roll call just to see? Because I know there was a lot of people trying to get in and some people I just told to go in by phone. So, I mean, I know that Eddie is now here and he was going to be one of our um, early speakers to share something, but I'm seeing some other people that I'm not really sure who it is. So okay. I thought okay, uh, that would be right after uh, Claudia reports and then Teresa, I think Teresa also, she's, uh, she was uh, the third and I know she wants to uh, 
you know, she always wants to be the first one or second, uh, but uh, why don't we wait until, uh, until uh, we hear from uh, Eric Quillares and the other person, and then we can hear whatever they have to report or say. Uh, is Claudia Arellanes there, yes. uh, Magdalena? Yes, I am. Good morning. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you very well. Thank you, uh, Claudia. How is how is uh, Arturo? Uh, better, much much better. Good. Well. Much much better. Thank you. Thank you for asking. You're well, well, I guess uh, I guess my my concerns are already have already been addressed by Julie, uh, and um, and the policemen staff. I'm very happy to hear that we're getting more security more more coverage with them. And um, the other thing is that uh, we are, I wanted to tell everybody, we already have the permits for dancing on the streets and uh, in the Callejón del Beso in our uh, twice a month uh, sidewalk sales. I don't know how we are on that, Raul. I don't know if I missed at the beginning something about well, that. Uh, well, uh, the, 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 like I said, I submit the, the application. It needs to be, uh -huh. Uh, approved by uh, Bill McGovern. Is, is, is that correct, uh, Julie? And yes, the fire... Yeah, so when you submit your application, you usually have to submit your special event permit application 30 days in advance. Right. That's so... the minimum 30 days in advance because it, you know, it goes to public works, to HR, it goes to parks, it goes to CDA, and then it also goes to the fire department and PD. So it, it takes a little bit of coordination internally to make sure that we review the plan and make sure that it's safe. Um, Raul, I'm sorry to jump back. Um, and uh, But I think Corporal John Kaczorowski is now available and is, can unmute. So you, you don't mind is, him introducing himself. Oh, there he is. Is he? Go ahead, John. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Corporal John Kaczorowski. Um, I'm be the new corporal starting while well, I've been kind of helping out over uh, with the last couple months in regards with uh, Robert Valdez, who uh, can be one of the big shoes I need to uh, fill. But right now I've been a, a corporal overseeing the Civic Center, uh, was uh, overseeing the parks and as well as a, as a motor. So um, I'm looking forward to this new uh, adventure. I know there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of, um, I know that the, the downtown has been very dynamic and, uh, but like Julie said, we have uh, beefed up our, uh, our, uh, our, our, our presence there with the, with the police and, and I'm looking forward to working along with uh, Julie and, and, and everyone here on, on this meeting to, uh, to assist with the, anything we can do and anything we can do as, as a police department to, to give a provide a uh, a nice safe environment uh, for all our our business patrons and and all our citizens that go and uh, and and visit our downtown. Well, thank you, John, uh, and nice to meet you. Also, we would like to meet you in person. Definitely, um, we could set it up with Julie, or when you could, um, I'll I'll give you guys my um, email or. And we could definitely uh, set up at any time, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'm very uh, excited to meet you guys. Thank you, John. Okay. John, I, I have a quick question. Um, I know um, Officer Valdez is he stepping back? Is that there's a transition? He's going into retirement. Oh, good for him. He's been yeah. wonderful. You know, one thing he did, and I don't want to you know, tell you that you have to go the same way, but he did put out his cell phone so we could text him for issues. And I, you know, it was great because there was just a level of communication there for us with the PD for smaller issues that weren't necessarily 911 calls, but it was like, hey, you know, there's a congregation of homeless in this alley. Can you go check it out? Or we have people climbing into our stair banks at night. Um, and I didn't know, um, you know, if we could redistribute good communication practices that your team would prefer with the um, local downtown owners, that would be wonderful. Oh, no, definitely. Um, if you guys are ready to jot down my, my, my uh, phone number. Yes. 
John, John, I want to caution you that this is recorded and will okay, be posted. We'll, we'll, so it just yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. So we'll um, maybe we'll, 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 we'll offline. I'll, I'll provide you guys my my uh, my cell phone number. I'll give you guys my personal cell phone number because uh, that's the type of service we want to provide and continue to provide uh, like Robert. So nothing's going to change. And anything that you guys need, you could definitely contact me or anybody else from my team uh, uh, that, the, like you said, the, the issues that don't really need to be um, the 911 calls, but there's still going to be issues that we need to address as a downtown. And, and we want to provide that, that, um, that service for, for you, for you guys in downtown. We Thank so you, appreciate it. it it's Thank so you. vital. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Alfredo Mesqua, uh, did you want to ask something uh, to Mr. John? No, I just want to welcome him. Welcome, John, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Well, thank you, Pedro. We'll, uh, we'll get together uh, over uh, maybe a little meal. Okay. <laughs> Lunch and coffee. Why not? Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, John. Nice meeting you, John. Thank nice you for joining you. the meeting. And, w and welcome to the downtown. Okay. Let's go back to Claudia. Claudia, Senora. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the other, the other thing that I I wanted to ask you, uh, Julie, uh, about the about the cost of the permits for dancing on the streets. Did I did I hear correctly that it is going to be in the thousands or? Or if this is just for people that are coming to do events in the downtown and they are going to profit from that? Are we as, as downtown organizations are gonna be seen the same way? Because we don't do we don't do these things for profit, as you know. We do them for the downtown, for the awareness that there's a downtown and and for the benefit of all. Um, this is not for profit. So I wanted to make sure that we are not in that same category as everybody else. I, I'm sure that a lot of people would want to not be in that same category, Ms. Arellanes. Um, the special event fee is across the board for everybody. There's, you know, the city has to be consistent and fair with everyone that applies for a special event permit. Um, I did mention a little earlier, Ms. Arellanes, that William McGovern would be the one to provide details. The $800 plus fee for the special event application would apply to all parties that submit. I think that something that puts you guys apart is that you in the past have submitted one application for six months and then you submit another application mm -hmm. for another six months. Um, I think that that will still hold, obviously because you guys have set up, you know, a, a good track record and, and it's been safe and positive and it's not like a, a concert where there's gonna be additional police presence needed or security, et cetera. So I think that that would be something for Santa Ana Business Council to discuss further with Bill McGovern. Um, I did mention earlier, Ms. Arellanes, that this fee is not a profit for the city. It's uh, to cover cost for the different departments and staff that review the special event permits. For example, traffic engineering, human resources, PD, um, you know, CDA, planning and building. The, the special event permits go through a variety of review uh, attorney's office. So, uh, and the fee is my my understanding is that it wasn't updated for a long, long time. That's why it was only one hundred and sixty five dollars for a long time, but now it's you know it's updated to reflect the cost of the review. So again, yep. I would encourage you to talk to Bill McGovern to see if you can submit one application for six months or longer, and then that way you're you're not burdened with that you know that new cost. Um, okay. Go ahead, Senora. No, no. I mean, I, I, I was, I, I, I am very concerned by that, but I think we can, we can, uh, we can work it out because, as Julie said, we have proven that dancing on the streets is being safe, and we have never had an issue 
And yes, we do request that one of our downtown policemen be there, just 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 to people see them that they're there. And uh, but there's no alcohol. There's there's pure enjoyment, like dancing, and that's it. And it ends at ten. And as you all know, we we start a class at six, from six to seven, and from seven to ten, it's dancing. So we are the most concerned of the people that coming to the downtown according to the events that are permitted in the downtown. We are very concerned by that. We understand that the kind of music that is played, that's the kind of music, that the, that's the kind of people that we're gonna get. So um, I don't know Raul, if, um, if you would like to take care of this with uh, Mr. McGovern or some other ways because if, um, if it's for six months and one fee for six months, that, that's very doable, even if it's the $800 or whatever, but if it's going to be twice a month, it's definitely, I mean, they're gonna kill us. They're gonna kill the event. So uh, that, yeah. that is my concern. I, my concern also, Julie, is that, uh, I mean, it's from 172 or 167 that, that, that I paid last time, going up to $800, uh, I mean, that's that's a lot to me. And I think for everybody that wanted to do some events in the downtown, but uh, I hope I hope we can work this together and uh, maybe, you know, and instead of uh, paying one time for six months, maybe we can pay one time for the whole year, you know, get somewhere where, you know, we, we, we do all these events, Julie, to attract people to the downtown, and uh, and after COVID and being, you know, affected by the uh, COVID more than a year, almost a year and a half, I mean, we we as a business people in the downtown, and and for any other people that want to come uh, to the downtown, we it's it's hard to not to do events and bring people to the downtown so we can stay in business. If we don't do events because the fees are, you know, uh, they're a little high, then uh, then there is no there is no customers coming to the downtown. We don't have uh, uh, people in the downtown. The city gets less income by the sales tax. You know, it's uh, that is just my concern that I see. Uh, and I hope we, you consider that, the city will consider that even though they already, it was already boarded by the council. I, I don't know if there's something that we can do about it or the city uh, or the council can consider something. Uh, you said for, uh, the fee would be for everybody, but we in the downtown, you know, we really work very hard uh, not only doing events to bring customers to the downtown, we work every day there to make sure that, uh, you know, that we, we attract people at the same time. Uh, uh, Raul? Yes, sir. Alfredo here. Go ahead, Alfredo. Uh, I just, I, I just want to add to your comments, uh, and Julia, and I think you're, you obviously are with us, and, and I think the, the pro your proposal of perhaps paying a, a one-year fee to, to review the to review our uh, our uh, uh, our proposal for one year, even if we have to pay the eight hundred dollars, I think that uh, I think that would make sense. And I and I, and I agree with you. One of the main reasons and one of the mo most significant uh, steps that we can take in the future is to bring back customers to the downtown Santa Ana, not only for our businesses but also to increase the tax rate for our city. That's very very important. Thank you. I, I asked a clarifying question, which is, Julie, um, if the city co-sponsors an event, do, are, is the fee waived? I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. If, if the city co-sponsors the event, is the fee waived? Typically, yeah. Typically, when the city co-sponsors events, um, several fees can be leveraged. Uh, the other thing is, I'm happy to invite William McGovern to the, Santa, the next Santa Ana Business Council meeting so that these topics can be discussed. I just wanna make sure that we're clear that, you know, 
I don't have the authority to waive a fee or to say you guys can pay it once for every six months or for every 12 months. However, you're right, Mr. Amesqua, I'm definitely pro downtown Santa Ana and I will make sure to bring this up to Bill McGovern so that we can, you know, identify how we can better work and coordinate because dancing on the streets or sidewalk sales, those are very um, simple layouts. They're very practical. They don't really require a lot of oversight. Uh, so it would make sense in my opinion to have one application for 12 months, but it is his jurisdiction to review and approve. So I'll definitely have that conversation and make sure to advocate positively for the downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. There's Thank another you, Julie. question that I have, which is, are all of these fees and things going to be reflected transparently on the city's um, websites so that everybody knows about these changes or is it just an internal thing that keeps changing and people don't know what is happening? It's a really general question, um, Madeline, but I'm going to try to answer. So I can think people all find out of, about fees? let me if I can just answer yeah. so all of the transactions and contracts and things of that nature are public record, as you are aware. And it's my understanding that finance has like a checkbook on the finance website where you can see those transactions. The miscellaneous fee schedule also exists in the annual budget um, for every single year there's a miscellaneous fee schedule so that's available there and it gets read once and it gets read twice by city council so that it's approved there's also town hall meetings before the budget is approved and as far as like communication to inform folks um, i think that we the city always can do a better job about informing um, even its own staff uh, about these new costs and new fees and et cetera and processes. Um, I wanna say that because this fee, Bill had mentioned that this fee had increased last year, but because of COVID, um, there weren't any special events. And so that's why we just you know, became aware of it now. As I mentioned earlier, I wasn't aware of the, the new fee until about two weeks ago. So I think I'm, I'm I'll just certainly asking invite you guys him to the next meeting. Putting are you going to put it on like a website? So like when vendors and all these different people come in, do they have access to a place where the city just transparently is saying, this is the fees and fines that are requested if you wanna have an event so that people don't have to go through like a, a, a process of not knowing because it's just not stated. Many cities have very easy processes which shows what the amounts are, how much they have to pay etc and recently we have people who've been paying for things um, and then they've been asking for refunds because of the fact that um, th they're not even allowed to have people or they haven't been able to have people and i'm just saying it, this stuff should be very it should be on the website i believe the miscellaneous fee schedule is on the website it's within the annual budget but to your point it should be um more apparent specifically for the special event application. So thank you, Madeline. I'll make sure to share this information with Bill McGovern. He's the person that's in charge of the special event applications. And so I'll make sure to share your comment with him. Uh, Julie, I have one other um, question in this regard. And I, I don't know, I know you are limited obviously in what you can do because this is kind of outside of your area of authority. But in terms of maybe we can put some thought to, to creative ways to maybe give grants or help that you have authority to be able to grant those quickly for events that you know would be very successful in the downtown. I mean, you really do have the eyes, ears, feet of the downtown and really probably have a very good idea of who should be getting grants to be able to run so I, I, I don't know if that's any type of possibility where you can maybe take back a little authority yourself to help us get people that should be permitted easily to be able to get a grant. 
Yes, the permit process will still remain the same 30 days in advance, go through PD and it goes through all the different departments that will remain. But it's my understanding, and when I first started about two, a little more than two years ago, there was a little pool of money um, within Fund 27 and Economic Development where we could co-sponsor events. I think that we co-sponsored some events for uh, Santa Ana Business Council, Downtown Inc., et cetera, and maybe like the Chamber. Um, I'm hoping absolutely to have that opportunity again, uh, Kim. And as soon as our financial situation with parking revenue and meter revenue gets back to a healthy state and we're able to program priorities like clean and safe, security guards, you know, basic things like cleaning, having the parking garages and our streets clean, if there's that funding available, then I'm going to turn back to the business groups to basically say, hey, here's this amount of money uh, on a monthly or annual basis. How should we program these funds? And so if a co-sponsorship pool is something of interest, we can absolutely explore that. And there was other some other feedback some time ago that said, we shouldn't just have an easy, like a loosey goosey system where you just sponsor whoever. There should be some sort of system and process. And I absolutely agree with that. And so we can help co-sponsor and help offset some of these fees. There's also, there's also other things that we can leverage like logistical items, traffic control and you know, trash and things of that nature. So it's important for me to, you know, have a little bit of a heads up with upcoming events. And I try my best to be, have my ear out for upcoming events so that I can offer, hey, we can help with this, we can help with that. And then, you know, program the different leveraging. But yes, um, co-sponsorship is something that we would definitely want to program. We just have to get there financially. Thank you, Julie. Anything else, uh, Kim? No? Okay. Well, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Julie so we can move on to the next item? No? Um, I just wanted to add to what Kim said. So um, for good event producers, they should definitely reach out to the city for co-sponsorship of their events, which would waive the fees. And they should also reach out to the council members for sponsorship and condition to get revenue and then the business groups also are, are granting and it is really missed that pot of money that was there from the strategic plan i believe and then maybe from parking revenue where the city was able to co-sponsor so that's something we'd love to have julie keep fighting <laughs> thank you ryan okay thank you Th thank you again ryan uh, let's move to Teresa. i hope she's still there I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Go ahead, Teresa. Sure. So uh, prior to the meeting beginning, um, one of your board members um, expressed some concerns about the progress of activity in segment three. Segment three is Santa Ana Boulevard between, um, let's just say, Mortimer and uh, Parton. And that area, as everybody knows, if you drive into the downtown, it was has been open. That open trench has been there for months, and you know, in some cases, we don't really see much activity happening at all. I know they've begin to they've started to drag the track into that area, um, and there have been delays for a variety of reasons. Some of it has to do with things that are in our control, and some of the things are. Um, things that we found when we uh, dug up the street that we weren't, uh, that weren't on any plans that we had to make accommodations for. Um, the current delay or the current pause in activity that, that you see out there is so that the contractor and OCTA and our CM team can come to some agreement as we begin to do the track installation, we've discovered some challenges in the processes when they come in to do the pour, to do that concrete pour that sets the rail in place. And so rather than have them continue with and have a track that we then have to go back and um, you know grind pavement away or make adjustments um, with the track itself, we wanna, we wanted to get it right the first time. And so we've put a pause there. Um, 
which I appreciate has created inconvenience to people, et cetera. Um, but we want to make sure at the end of the day, we have a safe and um, a, an operating system that everybody can, can ride safely and be proud of. Um, so as we prepare to bring the streetcar construction into, into the downtown, um, we want to really take this opportunity to take all those lessons learned in other areas so that when we do open up the streets in the downtown, they're able to work with better production and get the work done um, always safely. That's our main concern, but to make sure that they have good production and can get the get in and out of there quicker. So a couple of the things that we've done um, in order to help that process along is uh, we've had a couple of meetings out in the field. Julie and Mike Ortiz from the city and others um, gone down to kind of troubleshoot and see some areas and get some questions answered in advance. Um, we've identified some alternative loading zones for businesses, where, you know, kind of in thinking um, down the road, like, okay, if we close this, you know, what are the other things that happen? You know, because when we close streets, it has a ripple effect. So I think we've gotten those questions answered on the front end. Um, the other thing that we've asked the contractor to do is they have had a company come out and do ground penetrating radar. And that helps us see um, under the asphalt. So it, we're able to see where some of those conflicts that we discovered only by ripping up the free, you know, this, the roadway, um, we can see where some of those may be in place. And then we can sort out what the process will be to address those on the front end. So we want to make sure that the contractor has many other alternatives. Um, you know, in some case, we've had to change how the depth of the track bed and some other things that it does does take time then to go back to the designers. Um, there's a lot of calculation and redesign that has to happen. So we want to make sure that again, we can't change what's already there in the street, but we want to make sure that the contractor has enough um, opportunities and um, tools in their toolbox, if you will, to address those things and get them out of the way quickly. So I think I remind, I think I um, let everyone know that the first area that will be um, they'll be working in technically in Fourth Street is as they complete that work on Mortimer, they have to make the turn onto Fourth. So at that intersection, that intersection was scheduled to be closed this Friday, or well, today actually, for them to start that work next week. Um, we are aware of patches and pins coming in to the downtown. I believe it's on the 26th of June on a Saturday. And that event is expected to bring thousands of people into the downtown. I know you had a, um, you know, kind of a preview in February with a lot of people coming. And so it was agreed um, for a couple of reasons, but, mo but may mo mostly because of that event coming in that we've postponed Walsh, we've delayed them in opening and closing that intersection, sorry, in closing that intersection. So that intersection work has to be done first before we come into the downtown. So that's kind of- Teresa? Yes, sir. Teresa, this is Alfredo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I might've missed this, I apologize, but um, do we have tentatively a completion date of everything in downtown? Uh, oh, for the downtown. No, I don't have a completion date for the downtown. What I what I can tell you is that it's a year long process. So there's we're going to do the downtown in two chunks, um, four blocks each, uh, two not two non adjacent two block segments, if you will. So um, the first two segments will be Mortimer to French. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Mortimer to Spurgeon and then Main and Broadway will be the first two block segments that get opened up. That's about a six month window of activity. And then we start the other two blocks, which is what Ross and Broadway and then Main to Spurgeon. Well, so we, so we don't have a tentative day for completion. So it would be nice if we know some information along those lines, because obviously 
our businesses and our customers probably would want to know. Right. So, uh, you know, if it, if everything papered out perfectly, when they start a year from then would be when they would be done. And just and to be you know remind everyone there is still that moratorium that has to happen between Thanksgiving and Christmas and so Thanksgiving and New Year's. So whenever they start, um, even if they're not finished with segments, they have to uh, you know put plates down or do whatever it is they have to do so that uh, the downtown can be opened um, during those six weeks. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else has questions for uh, Teresa? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Juan Cha. Hi, Teresa. Uh, what is the grand opening for the approximately for what years, what dates? Sure. So right now we're looking at the summer of 2023. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Walter. Anybody else? Okay, then uh, let's move to the next item five. Magdalena, please go ahead. Yes, so I'm going to fit in real quick. Um, let, let, can um, Eddie, we can have you go right now to start out. Okay. Is Eddie there? I'm the yep, I'm here. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Eddie. Long time don't hear. See you. I, I know, I know, I know. I drive by your location almost every day, every day <laughs> uh, to avoid construction, but I love it. 2023, yeah. at least I have an end date. That's good. At least I have expectations. Good yeah. morning, all of you fine folks. Uh, thank you very much, first and foremost, for having me a, a part of your meeting today. I'm really excited to share with you. And first and foremost, thank you uh, for believing in me um, two years ago when I came in a month or a couple of weeks before uh, the 2019 Tamal Festival. And uh, I came in and uh, asked you a, um, to help out uh, financially for the event. And uh, all of you generously, all of you um, individually and as an organization um, sponsored the event. So I appreciate that. And, and look what we did with your sponsorship. Uh, I, I'm happy to say that uh, with that sponsorship uh, in 2019, our event, uh, Gen generated a lot of money for the city, uh, a lot of traction, and uh, put us on the map for uh, a December event. So thank you. Uh, but today I'm here uh, just to uh, review two events for you. Um, I'd like to review uh, 2021 Pozolada and 2021 Tamal Festival that we'll be having here in downtown Santa Ana. Uh, same location as the 2019 Tamal Festival, which was on 4th Street between Ross and, um, and Broadway, okay? So a couple of things, uh, so we have dates already, okay? We have dates for this great event. Um, the first one is a for Pozole Festival. It's gonna be on Saturday, October 9th, which will be a week after the art walk. Again, Saturday, October 9th. And again, the reason why we pick these dates and times is because we know that other days and other events, there will be traction, the city will be vibrant um, during that day or downtown area. So we decided to pick dates where we know there's nothing planned and we want to generate revenue for the downtown area. So that's why we picked October 9th, Saturday uh, for the Pozole Festival, okay? And that's going to be from the hours of 4 to 10 p.m. Again, uh, the, for the Tamal Festival, um, the event will be on December, Thursday, December 16th from 4 to 10 p.m. as well. Uh, a little bit about each event. Um, so one of the great things about that uh, with the success of the Tamal Festival is we decided to say, hey, you know what? We want to do something different. So we kind of surveyed a little bit and we said, you know what, a pozola, a pozolada or a pozole festival would be great for the downtown area. Um, so a little bit about that. Uh, I'll review the pozole festival. Then I'll go into the Tamal festival. Uh, after that, I'll give you a little bit of a media uh, traction that we had and what we're doing right now to make it another successful event. Uh, so one, the pozolada. Again, you know, it's going to be October 9th. One of the great things is going to follow the same blueprint that we had for the uh, Tamal festival. Uh, same closures, uh, same vendors, uh, eight vendors providing uh, pozole. It's going to be considered like a tasting. So you're going to give your cup of pozolada or pozole, and that's going to be the event itself. Uh, same blueprint, guys. We're not going to change anything. Um, so that's a great thing about the event, and a lot of the resources that we had from the Tamal Festival are going to continue on for the pozolada. A uh, couple things. Um, it's all local. So every restaurant in downtown Santa Ana, they will be participating. The eight vendors will be here in downtown Santa Ana from the general vendors will be here in Santa Ana. Uh, that's why it's 
by the city for the city, which is a great thing. We don't go outside and get vendors to sell tamales or pozole, anything like that. It's literally the restaurants in downtown Santa Ana um, and different types of pozole. Uh, the other great thing about it is we're going to have live entertainment. Same thing, nothing different. Um, and we expect that economic impact for this event is going to be about $65,000 for the city on October 9th. So again, $65,000. You got to remember the 2019 Tamal Festival was a success because we brought in about $62,500 into downtown Santa Ana. The other great thing is that we had over 2,500 people show up to that event within a five hour period, right? We had over 12,000 tamales sell out, okay? On top of that, we also had over every single vendor was sold out of tamales within an hour and a half, which in 90 minutes, it was a complete sellout, okay? Every vendor was happy, everyone, the entire city, anyone that that was there was extremely happy and uh because it was a success okay so that's why we want to have the pozole same thing it's going to generate all that income for the, for the downtown area it's going to bring more people more traction hopefully the same amount of people that were here for the Tamal festival in 2019 so that's our event going back to now moving forward 2021 Tamal festival we're expecting the same amount of people we're expecting a hundred thousand dollars for this event okay um because of the fact that we had the traction um, with five weeks of planning, we were able to have a successful event. And now with this Tamal Festival 2021, we started planning since since early of uh, last year of 2020. And then COVID happened, we paused. And now we just resumed again our meetings and stuff. And we're excited um, because of the fact that I'm very fortunate to have an amazing team and a committee that's backing me up for the Tamal Festival and the Pozolada. Um, other things that the, the Tamal Festival, same thing, rather than seven Tamal vendors that we had, we're going to have 10 Tamal vendors now. Uh, we're probably going to make it, we're going to have it grow a little bit more. So because it was, it was tight, it got really crowded. So we're going to move it over and we're going to probably run out to Raw Street as well. Other cool things that we're doing for the Tamal Festival is that we're going to have live entertainment, um, real big bands. We're, uh, our budget was only $1,000, uh, uh, what, two years ago. We're going to expand that. So some great live entertainment, great food, great vendors for the Tamal Festival. Um, so the numbers. So one of the good things about the events that we have, guys, is, one of the greatest things that someone said to me about the event was it's one of the few events in downtown Santa Ana that I'm able to bring my parents to, that I can bring my family to, right? And and have an amazing event because of the fact that, you know, the tamales were uh, amazing, they were great, but I can bring my family to this, I can bring my parents. And that was that was, that was very important, to me, especially coming from a Generation X or a, or a Z or, or a Wire, you know? So that's good. That's good. I'm very excited to hear that. Um, that people were, were proud to be Santa Ana and that we had a successful event in downtown Santa Ana. Um, one of the things that, you know, the event. So in 2019 at the Mont Festival cost uh, was $23,000. That's how much everything it said, paid security, lighting generators, everything. That's how much the event cost us. Uh, we only fundraised $15,000, but fortunately there's this uh, great looking agent, a state farm agent that subsidized the remaining $7,000 and stuff because he believed in this event, and I believe in this event for sure. So the event cost twenty-three thousand. We expect the Pozole Festival to, to cost us twenty-five thousand. We want to generate. We're probably going to generate sixty-five thousand dollars for the downtown Santa Ana. But the Mile Festival is going to probably cost about thirty-five thousand dollars to have the event. But I'm pretty pretty confident it's going to generate over a hundred thousand dollars for the for the downtown area as well. Uh, just giving things in perspective and how much it's going to generate. Um, so that's pretty much. My two cents, I wanted to go over. We already have sold media. Media is calling me up already. Like they want to know the dates. We already shared with them. We have ABC 7 coming up, Fox 11. We have KCAL 9, Univision. We have uh, Telemundo. Uh, ABC, Telemundo, and um, and Univision all showed up to our event in 2019. And there's more traction. The media really, really excited to be here and, and support us during this event and stuff. So, uh, and then honestly, if all goes well and these two events, uh, are are successful um you know uh, hopefully all goes well we definitely in 2022 want to also include a taquiza so and that's what we have with any any overage of the money we're not it, it stays in the fund in the account and we want to host taquiza for this uh fine downtown city downtown santa Ana. thank so you eddie moving forward yeah. what what we would need to do is eddie's going to turn in a proposal with a request for some sponsorship and we'd have to put it on the agenda and our board would have to go and review everything in the proposal and then put forward whether or not um, in the next meeting you would sponsor the event, help to sponsor the events, the two events. 
Thank you. Thank you, Magdalena. Anybody else has any questions for Eddie? No? Eddie, I'm so happy to hear that you are very energetic and excited about that, and we are too. I know, I know. It's 8.30 morning call. I get it. People people are, are, are just waking up and, uh, you know, having a cup of coffee. Maybe maybe in person, I'll just bring coffee before before you guys vote on the, <laughs> on, on the generosity. <laughs> Red Bulls and coffee. All right, good. Yeah. good Eddie, know. Eddie, this yes. is great news for the downtown. And, you know, we're, we're just fortunate that you're willing to, to jump in and have fun with this. And I, I just think these events are perfect for the downtown. They're family friendly. It's about yeah. the culture. It's about the great food. So, yeah. you know, job well done. And we're just thrilled to have you in the downtown. We're lucky. Kim, Kim, thank you so much. And remember, it's going to be a one-two punch. So it's going to be boom, Fiestas Patrias, boom, Pozole Festival, boom, Noche Altares, and boom, Tomal Festival. So if we can have a successful, a signature event every single month here in the downtown area, it's going to be a success, something to look forward to in downtown Santa Ana, coupled with everything else that's happening in, the, in this vibrant downtown. So uh, it's the one-two punch. That's what I'm hoping for. And uh, I, I believe it's going to be a success again. I believe so, too, uh, <laughs> Eddie. Yeah, okay. Well, absolutely. thank you so much, Eddie, for uh, sharing that information with us. And we're, very, and we're glad to, uh, to be part of the sponsorship. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining the meeting again. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's move to the next. Uh, Marilyn, you're, you want to go ahead? Yes, okay. The first thing is that we have a project that is a strategic planning project that the board has asked for. Juan Cha is one of the lead people who requested us put in directories for downtown. So right now we have a team of people who are all working on different aspects, but I cannot give them a go until I know where we can install the actual directories. So I put together a proposal, which I believe I sent out to board members. Um, and the main thing which we need to know it's from the city on the city side, we, we, they're 18 by 30. And um, I believe that we, we have something that we should have had sent to Julie. I'm not sure if it was sent yet, um, but we need to know if there's six locations in downtown that we could install those directories. And Magdalena. once I know that our designer, the, the, the folks that are printing and installing, and also the people who are um, doing the mapping into the thing of the, of all of the businesses, they can all begin the work that they need to do. So I just want to get this project moving forward. And I just need to know where are locations that the city would approve for six directories. Magdalena, I, ha I, I haven't received that information, <laughs> Madeline. There's, there's a little bit more than just approving locations. Um, you know, there, it, there's a requirement of who's going to install as far as like general contractor, their insurance and agreement if an agreement is necessary, the public works would have to do like an encroachment permit and we would have some sort of maintenance language within that agreement so that we know who's responsible for repairing or you know, replacing, et cetera. So it's a little more to, um, to that. I'm happy to have a sidebar conversation or a meeting with you and the team whenever you're ready. Uh, Julie, can I, can I ask you, what would be the first uh, thing to do with, uh, to start the, uh, the project, uh, getting the, the locations first or going through you or in public works? Uh, can you tell, can you tell us that? And, and if we can uh, set, up, set up an appointment with you and uh, we can walk through the downtown with you and, and find those places or locations that we need to uh, install the... Yes, so what I had asked Ms. Arellanes was for the specs. So I said, I, I'm not sure what, all this entails. So I would need to know, you know, the dimensions, a, a picture of what it's going to look like. Uh, and then it, it would be key for you guys to identify the locations that you prefer. And then that way, it's your concept, your plan, your locations. Once you have that, Public Works will basically say, oh, we can't have it too close to the curb. Let's just 
move it over a few feet, blah, blah. So they'll give suggestions and then they'll start the process of like a encroachment permit and a, not an encroachment permit, an easement. I can't think of the word, an agreement. So that way the install is properly done, it's safe and that we know who the responsible party is for maintenance and repair. Uh, Julie, uh, yes, would it be would it be possible and instead of uh, going through that process first and then come back and uh, and uh, and choose one more time the locations and instead of doing that can we can we maybe set up an appointment with you and go through the downtown first and choose the locations first and then Yes. You know, with your knowledge, how the city works and public yes. works, maybe maybe we can choose the, the, the locations the first time and then you, we just submit those uh, locations to public works in the city. Um, that, that would be a good um, first step, Raul. I'm not a public works engineer. I do have a little bit of knowledge as far as like what they typically ask for. I'm happy to do the walkthrough. I love walking downtown. And um, we can identify those places together. Uh -huh. And it, it would be basically on, the thing is that I don't have enough, I don't know what they look like. I don't, I don't know how big they are. I, I don't have enough information, Raul. I, I only know about the we'll, concept. We'll, we'll, there's a document that will be sent to you that has the information. They're Thank 18 you. by 30, just so you know. Right here, we're saying that but they are drawn out for you so you can see. In terms of what everything looks like, we don't have any any um, completed, um, we, we haven't completed the project because we, we, we first need to know that there's a location that they can go. It would be worthless for us to go through that whole process without, without first knowing that they have a place that they can be actually put in downtown. So maybe a public works person can be added to that meeting where you walk around downtown so that some of those steps can be taken care of at one time. Absolutely. We've done that for um, like when we installed the, the art, the sculptures, the big sculptures, the arts in the city sculptures, the wings of the city. We, we absolutely could do the same thing. Just let me know a date and a time um, when you guys have the one pager or I, I, Madeline, you said that you, you'll send it to me. So hopefully I'll see that soon. Okay. So then uh, you set up the appointment uh, with, uh, with Julie uh, Magdalena? As soon as I get that, yeah. that document, yeah. that would be yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just that a, good. a quick thought on this. Um, and I'm sure this will be thought through as well, but you know, with the fourth street going under construction and the sidewalks being ripped out and also the first American title site, you know, there's going to be that big court area. Apparently we may want to just for now do three directories or four instead of the six and then plan on adding an additional two once construction is finished. You know, I, we may want to parse out the, the project just because the downtown is very is in flux right now so just a thought and Thank one you. other thing is that there, the, there it's actually three six is actually three because the six are a shop and a dine so each of those are like they would be like for instance if we were to put two of them in the area that is the second street promenade or if we'd put two in near garages so when people come out they can automatically see where they can go downtown and scan it and find different restaurants. So it's it's basically like, it almost could be in three areas that are near maybe a, um, a garage or one area where there's a promenade, you know? But they're just, the two are, it's a shop and one's a dine. Okay, thank you, Magdalena. Um, any, any other questions? No, go ahead, Magdalena. Um, okay, the next thing is the mural map is in, in progress right now. And um, I'll actually send you guys the uh, a layout of all the different parts of that project, which is, um, and and how it's, how each part of it is gonna be going. All of the, um, we had a transition where we have a group that's working on it because our commissioner actually didn't want to have any conflict of interest of working with downtown, which is Andrea Harris. So there's there's the rest of a team that's working on it. And she's she did all of the photographs and gave all of the materials. So um, that's a small transition, um, but it's still in process. And I'll send you guys details so that you can see that. 
Um, the other thing is um, about the permitting of open space, which we already talked about earlier, and the changes in cost, as well as the fact that I am very concerned about the fact that it took us a long time to develop a lot of our public markets, and all of them have, have found other homes, which I sent in that email that you all received. Um, it takes a long time to develop a public market that's successful. Um, and I just want to say, like, I know that we have a farmer's market, but it's an unsuccessful public market. Um, and we've tried to help out a little bit, but it's not something that attracts attention and brings people into downtown in the way that would be great, even though we'd love it to be that way. Um, these other public markets were very good. And one of the things is I think there's a direct correlation between people being on the street and public safety. And this is one of the things that I notice, and it's happened before, the flux, where nightlife becomes very vibrant, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things and altercations. But the daytime, what we have is a downtown that's actually a lot of vacant spaces, and in and this is really bad. Um, and so it would be really nice to be able to have our public markets, but most of them have found other homes. Um, including one that was has been here for 20 years. You all know Patchwork Festival. This year they're in Tustin. A lot of restaurants all reached out and were really disappointed because that draws in a lot of people. And we've had the Patchwork Festival forever. So I just want to I just want to mention that it takes a very long time. You can ask other cities across the country. Public market development is an art form. And we had a lot of beautiful public markets that are gone from our downtown. I don't know if they'll be able to come back. And um, and so that's something that I just want to I just want to share. Um, the next thing is um, the the downtown safety issues, which we spoke in, in the down in the board meeting. We wrote letters. I just wrote another letter yesterday to everybody in the city. I got a call back from Gominsky, um, and just that this is what we've seen is a gradual. Um, the, the violence starts and it's all these different things in all different parts, whether it's violence and altercations with homeless people, violence that has happened um, from bars at night, um, violence that's happening from gangs, violence that's happening from um, anything else that's going on. And when you start to see it rise all at once, it just it's like a conflagration of violent things and it only takes one time for all our business to shut down because the perception of safety in a downtown is so important. And already, like for instance, after our letter, Robin's like, I can't bring students downtown anymore with this kind of thing going on. So those kind of chilling effects on an area are really important. So getting on top of them is something that I think is something that should be of utmost concern. And I'm very disturbed that we, we don't have security. And I'm also very disturbed that um, recently, somebody said, well, why don't we use, maybe we can use AARP funds for that security. Um, I, I just think that uh, if we had 15 security guards at all time downtown, I prefer them almost to PD and then call PD if something's serious. But just those eyes on the street are great and having people on the street is great. So those two things need to work in tandem and they need to be allowed. And I'm, I'm disappointed that it's becoming harder for us, as you see with higher fees. So essentially what's happening is we're actually being told we have to pay more to have more people come to downtown. And at the same time, we see violence rising and we're gonna give more money to help pay for PD and other things to watch downtown. Doesn't make any sense. It's bad. It's a bad system. It doesn't work. So I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. And I hope that our groups and when we have our public, um, our parking meeting, we can really talk about a strategy for this and flip it back the other way where it's human beings that are on the streets and the violence goes down, people are watching and it, it balances out the downtown again. Um, I don't know if anybody has any comments on the on that, but I know we've already had us, we've had the police talk to us and everybody. So um, the next thing is we're looking at doing a, a music festival. It's still really in the kind of early inception, but both groups are, are looking, we had an, a very awesome person who said that they'd sponsor, they wanted to do a summer of music. And since we have all these, you know, um, it, what it essentially would be is that there'd be different people playing for five weeks at a time in downtown, um, in different little spots throughout the downtown. 
um, so that there's so that when you're walking around, it's very nice and vibrant and you have music going on, whether it's classical to um, to bands that p would play every once in a while. Um, and, and I don't know if you've looked, but Seegerstrom Center for the Arts has done a music, a summer of music. We have uh, Chapman doing a summer of music. Everybody, it's kind of something that's happening this summer. Um, so this is no different than those things, but I have sent a proposal forward to everybody um, in the board to look at in terms of our iterative steps of going through this process and looking at this. And it would be, a we're matching somebody's sponsorship and then we're, it's divided between the two groups. So, and we're still in the stages of developing it. So you guys will have a fully fleshed out plan before anything goes to anyone or the city or anyone. We, we, we like to work out our projects beforehand. So we know exactly what we're doing. And okay. then we have one beautiful opportunity, which is coming up for a public art project similar to the wings of the city. And we are in early discussions with the consulate and others around this. And so that's another thing that um, I will send the board um, all information so you guys can check it out and see if it's something that you're interested in. We thought that it'd be a wonderful thing to be able to attract attention regionally um, to the downtown, especially in a time when we have so much construction going on where it would be obvious that things would people would would not want to go through the difficulty of coming downtown but with some kind of a spectacle that really attracts attention um, we thought that this would be a wonderful thing so and we sent a preliminary email to Teresa which she should have received also just to start talking about it and we'd love to meet with you um, Teresa and 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 share with you also about this project and that's very interesting Yes, I'm very I, interesting to see uh, the project, uh, Magdalena. Okay. I have a question um, for Madeline and maybe Ryan Smoller. Um, in terms of this public market, you know, it's my perception of the downtown that, I mean, we are so much more charming than any other city. I mean, it, it's just not even hands down. We have, we have the, the bones for great public markets. So I'd be interested in, you know, I mean, obviously we're so sad that these um, public markets left, um, but how can, um, you know, is there anything we can do to support you, Madeline, you, Ryan, in terms of getting these people back? Do we need to, you know, take them out to lunch? Do we need to do some hands-on, you know, selling of the city? Um, I just think it's so important that we realize the absolute gem of the city that we have in that the streets are so narrow they're so charming. We have the historic buildings. It's just like no other place in Orange County. So what can we do to bring these people back? Um, and maybe there's yeah. some people that we let go that are good that we let go, but you know, what, how can we support the two of you in this venture? Kim, I think that the hardest part is that other cities are offering things that our city just isn't, we don't, we are not. So when Anaheim wants a, like when, when these cities reach out, they're like aggressively desire these things that we have. And once they get them and they're facilitating that, it's just, it's not something that like Patchwork Festival has been downtown for, I'd say probably 20 years or something as well. Patchwork Festival is huge. It's in, it, it started and was born in downtown Santa Ana and it has gone to multiple cities across California. Uh, it was started by Delilah Snell and her cousin who is Alta Baja Market. And um, the thing is that like this year, we don't have the opening where uh, somebody else is already open in, in the way that Santa Ana isn't. So the permitting and everything couldn't happen. The Golden Years Festival, she usually does it three times a year with this vintage arts festival. So all of our programming that is the things that keep the downtown safe. These are also the things that we don't have. And for instance, Gente Night Market was essentially chased out of downtown. And now they're at the Heritage Museum, which is a beautiful spot. And I saw their last festival is the most beautiful thing I've seen. It actually, the Heritage, it, it it's more facilitating. They're helping and accommodating and they want the attention, the attraction, the people and all of these things. So when people, when, when someone hosts and they're a good host, then, and they don't have a lot of 
red tape to go through, it makes it much easier for them to be there. And until we have some kind of a smooth process that allows for good actors to come down and do these beautiful events and continue to do the beautiful events, like, and recognizes them, it, like, then it, it just can't be done. So, and we have done that back in 2019, we had two new market developments that were brilliant. Um, and they stopped something that we had been going on for years, which was our biggest night was the first Saturday of the month. We started having a Wednesday. So the heartbeat of the city would be like first Saturday, all the businesses would do really well. Then then what the, the, the um, third, or what is the third Wednesday of the month? Everybody would do well. So now that heartbeat in the city would have two times when businesses would do well because the streets had lots of people in a, in a, in a beautiful, um purchasing and and coming downtown and doing all these things and it, i don't know like it's just it's just been really hard everything from the difficulty with permitting people have had to duplicate the city's efforts on our own websites create ways to make the permitting seamless the city just doesn't have it together on the on the way that they permit the changes in prices all the things that you're hearing and other cities do so it just makes it easier and we need to pull all that together. And it's it's really about that. And uh, I'll just add to that, you know, some of the short term things that we are going to do is we're going to reach out to all the event producers and help share with them the information that is being revealed now about how to get permits, permit fees, how to get sponsorships. Uh, we're making sponsorship money available. So we're trying to bring people back in, give them access and, uh, and help with any funding through the different sources that are available. But I also want to reiter reiterate what Madeline is saying on the macro level has been happening for years, which is good events that get established in downtown get cannibalized and taken away from us. And it's even been actors like the mall who've copied our events or other cities like, like Anaheim who's looked at our events and then offered them money. Uh, at the same time, you know, every week we send out our newsletter, um, the, the packing house, the lab, all of these guys are watching, looking at everything we do, copying it. And so it quickly gets replicated or attracted elsewhere. And we really don't have that much to offer beyond, like you said, um, Kim, the attractiveness of the downtown, but the reality is, you know, when there's an event downtown, we're going to charge higher parking rates. There's security issues right now. There's lots of uh, challenges as people have to get, you know, approval from lots of different people to have their events. Um, and we've tried in the past as a strategy to be a superstructure for a lot of small event producers and like provided the insurance or the permit. But unfortunately, if we partner with somebody and they then have to, get additional licenses and insurance and they, they have to start following a lot of rules and they don't want to, then we get into a really sticky predicament with the event producer that we're supporting and who's on our systems and doesn't want to comply as the city continues to come up with fees, permits and processes that are changing and are complicated. So it's a very tough environment. And we've seen a lot of this effort really go out the door and I, I think we're we're really having to start fresh again and luckily there's a lot of energy and I think we should really advocate to the city for the American Rescue Plan Act funds which are funds that are now available and should be replenishing some of our ability to rebuild this economy uh, downtown with sponsorships with uh, making the event the, the downtown more event friendly by installing work electricity insights and lighting and things that will forever reduce the cost and amplify the beauty and availability of our spots. So in the short term, we've got to educate people in the long term. We need to advocate for more resources, more partners for these downtown events. Travel Santa Ana is a new partner that has a $2 million budget to promote Santa Ana and is funded by hoteliers. So this is somebody who we should have a deep partnership with and should be very involved in all of our festivals and seeding a healthy economy for downtown to succeed. One other little thing that I think is really important is for some reason, it seems as if 
um, and maybe Julie knows more, but the city seems to see, think that the downtown is like bloated and has too much. And we, we, we somehow like are asking for things that are outside of the range. But what in reality is we're facilitating the opportunity to have a civic center in our city and to make it a special place that actually is something where all of the centers throughout the city also gain a lot from it like this um, project that we just did with the lending libraries there's a whole group of, of neighbors that have now formed and they're continuing on the project without us we started something and they are continuing it it continues to spread this joy it's like it's something that pulls neighborhoods together and 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 distributes it so the downtown has incubated a lot of different things and if the center can no longer be that civic um, commons that does this and can't incubate things anymore, then everybody loses out. And people may think that downtown is always asking for money, but we're actually very underfunded. And we, we, we have now traveling through multiple cities in the United States, and we can really see the deficit in our downtown in terms of its support of us. And, and that is our boards. So our boards need to, I think, do some more advocacy because I don't even think that they're giving they have anything in the funding cycle, even though we all wrote in letters for the downtown support. And I don't think that there's any funding being put into that from what I saw the city put out in terms of of um, the funds that are going into many different projects from the um, the money that they just received from the government. So the board as a whole, we need to make some advocacy letters and really help the city to understand that this isn't about a greedy downtown. It's about a starved downtown that is trying to help incubate a community and a community commons and to help produce these things. And we know that what we have is good because everybody else wants it. And that's why all of our public markets are somewhere else now. Like Patchwork being in Tustin, like that's that's our neighborhood city. Like, well, I just am struck by just the enormous talent we have in our city between you, Madeline, Ryan, you know, the the board, Claudia, Julie. I mean, we're a very very talented group of of people that are very dedicated for the good of community, and we really do, you know, the. The downtown is the Orange County treasure of Orange County. I really believe that heart and soul. And I think you're right. I think that there has to be more advocacy um, on the part of the boards um, on every level, letters, but also meetings with, you know, really trying to reach out to people. And Julie, I mean, you probably know the ins and outs of the city. You know, probably the people that can be moved to begin to see uh, the problems that are really holding us back. And these are, you know, big problems that will probably be so solved over a long period of time. But, but, you know, I think building those relationships in all the ways that we can, you know, we have such a talented board. Um, so I think, you know, maybe as, a, you know, when we have our next strategy meeting, we really need to put some thought to how we can be the best advocates we can for the bids uh, on many levels. So that's just my final thoughts on that, but thank you for sharing. Thank you, Magdalena. Thank you, Kim. You know, I, I just want to make a little comment and then we're going to move to the next item. And, and Julie wants to talk uh, at the end. So my comment is that, you know, uh, I've been in downtown for going 43 years and I have seen a lot of things, good things, bad things. And, um, and as much as we work, you know, we as a business people that we're trying to, you know, make some money in the downtown and all the things that we do is just like uh, all the things that we do and, and, and we do it for free. You know, we don't charge anything. We, we do it because we have our business. I like what I do. I also like to be part of the community and do things for the community also. And, and I'm glad to do it, uh, you know, for free, the way I'm doing it. And the same with Ryan, the same with Madeline. I mean, I mean, uh, everybody that is on, on the board. We do it for free because we have an interest. Uh, we want to bring people to the downtown. And the downtown, it's the, the way it is. The, the downtown has got to a point where everybody wants to do what we do in the downtown. 
But what I see is that whatever we do is never good uh, for the city. They're always trying to, uh, you know, to uh, put us walls that uh, make it more difficult to us. I mean, I don't wanna, uh, you know, go through that uh, anymore. Uh, I would hope that the city would really support us on, on everything and, uh, and just, you know, look more carefully what we do in the downtown. Without, without us, without the two associations doing what we do, this, the downtown would not be at, at, at the highest point where, where it is right now. And uh, we just don't get any credit. Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, uh, I mean, I have to say it like that. And, uh, and, and uh, I hope that we, we are recognized for what we do in the downtown and just support us, you know, uh, more, whether uh, more, uh, morally or with money or reducing the, the you know, the, the, the permits, the licenses. Uh, I know that it's, you know, things go up, they get, uh, the cost of living is more, but uh, increase, the, increase the, the license permit for events, but not that much. I think it's just too much. And it discourages people from com to come into the downtown and do events. And uh, it's just not uh, the right moment right now to to increase all those fees from the city. That's it. Um, anybody has any more comments? I would like to say something, Ro. Um, this is Lonnie. Hi, everyone. Um, as the founder of Amiga Social Club, which is mainly, well, it is an all women's club. We were very excited to start in-person meetups again and, and gatherings. And I just have to say, I'm very unmotivated right now. To, because safety and um, is probably the, the top, you know, with an all women's group, safety is priority for us. I myself encountered something before back in January with the transient, and I got a very condescending response from one of the officers. So I didn't let that get to me. I was very excited to start planning in person things, but now just hearing all this, it's really hard seeing that all these other. Um, people that have actually moved out of downtown, it's being, it's really hard to stay motivated right now to want to continue to do things in downtown. Thank you, Lani. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Claudia Nafa, is she there? Hi. Yes, hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Claudia. You want to go ahead and start your report? Uh, yes, Claudia? yes, it's Please. Maria, are you there? Maria Gonzalez, is she with us? Oh, she's probably not there. Anyhow, as you know, Maria Gonzalez is also working in our social media and we're doing it very well on our social media. We have increased our followers and our engagement is going up. Uh, we had this tragedy of starting with a lot of the food, a lot of the restaurants, because that's what really creates that engagement. And slowly we've been integrating the businesses, the murals, the you know daily life, and that's working very well. And we're excited to see more of the public events happening so we can create more momentum in that. So we hope something can be worked out in regards to that. Um, I think what, Maria is back, Claudia. Oh, Maria, are you back? Yes, hi, hi Claudia, yes. Hi. Do you wanna talk a little bit about what you're doing? I just briefly you know, mentioned the strategy of starting with the food and um, how slowly we're integrating everything else. But yes, wanna... um, so good morning, everyone. Um, uh, I just wanted to share the exciting news. I'm going to start with Instagram. We kind of did a soft, not a rebrand, but really like we're encouraging or we're making Calle Cuatro branding. We're telling people it's a guide to Calle Cuatro marketplace, retail, arts, culture, dining. And we kind of, um, we, we have a strategy where we really showcase the people that come to Calle Cuatro. We do share a lot of the city um, important information and updates. We share um, Cielo, who's like this um, public figure now. She's going to Harvard, you know, and she's a Santa Ana student. 
Um, we're sharing, uh, you know, you, you could see photo, less, less food and more people and more stories and just really making a name for Calle Cuatro. And, and it's taken a lot of hard work and a lot of, um, it's like a full-time job, really engaging with the, with the partners um, so that people can really engage with Calle Cuatro and not so much just the downtown Santana um, page. And um, we have grown it. Um, I have numbers for you guys. The Instagram has grown 245 followers and that's um, really huge um, on Facebook. Um, you could see some of the analytics but on Facebook the the biggest thing that I want you guys to know is that our post engagement that's people liking sharing commenting um, has gone up 372 um, percent since I've taken the account over in March and it's it's really something exciting to put you know Calle Cuatro Marketplace um, the social media presence like on the map so thank you, Claudia. Thank you. That's my update. Thank you. thank you, Maria. Thank you. In terms of just really quick, just letting you know, I don't know if you everybody had a chance to look at our YouTube page, but that's also has been updated. We now have 68 videos from Boca de Oro. Something really nice about this year doing it um, through an online portal is that we have now all the content of everything that happened in Boca de Oro. Unlike previous years, we had a photographer and myself and Maddie and anyone that would have a camera that would share those videos with us, then we can go ahead and you know try to make something out of them. But now we really have these beautiful videos of everything that happened. Uh, some of the videos are not, we're not able to upload, you know, there's copyrights and whatnot, but right now there's 68 videos. Downtown Inc has been sharing uh, some of the reels in their newsletter. Next week, we'll have the closing of Boca de Oro. But if you have a chance, go to your YouTube page. I am actually going to be sending the link to all the board members and everybody. So hopefully you'll have a chance to look at some of those performances. They're, they're really amazing. What, you know, uh, Santana Unified and what they did with all of the kids and the hard work they went through to put the show together, it was really amazing. So hopefully you'll get a chance to look at that. Um, and for the Bridal and Quinceañera show, I've been in touch with Veronica. We started talking um, early in the month. They, need, they needed our help in terms of a flyer and a vendor form. Uh, they sent me all the information. I send it back to them and they're working on it, but they're having difficulties. I talked to Veronica Monday. They're very, um, they're unsure it's going to go through. First, they wanted to do it in the Yoast, now it's going to be in the street. And they're not having enough commitment from all the participants to do this show. Uh, they haven't reached back in terms of the flyer. The flyer has been done, it's been done, but they still need modifications. We took out two vendors, they, they, we added the street, um, you know, just the details, just the details for people to know, but they haven't actually given me the, the, the green light on the posting of the flyer. So we're waiting on that. Um, in the kids friendly campaign, we, we have identified the vendors and the toys that we would like to purchase to activate public spaces. Again, we're waiting on green lights for that and to share with the board on the things that we have uh, identified that will be, that, that other cities are using. Again, other cities have all these spaces where families can come and gather and have, you know, an amazing time. We're waiting for green lights and for those things to happen as well. In terms of the kid, our kid mayor, we're working on a series of videos where we're going, we're actually going to, the, to all our wards and looking at the parks, looking at the facilities and really asking the people of Santana, what is it that they need? What do what the families need? What are their needs? And through the kids friendly campaign, we're actually, you know, building that series as we speak. And, Claudia, can, we, can we also add Carissa Raya is here and as a part of our kid friendly campaign, we have an yes. upcoming event that we we are going to be doing, which is called we wanted to do it a while ago, but um, we have to hold off. So she's going to tell you a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, 
Hi, good morning. I've just been listening. Thank you for having me on, Madeline, and coordinating so much of what this project is from an idea. Madeline and I met a couple of months ago, I want to say, and I just brought this idea to her. Um, I'm a Santa Ana born and raised um, photographer, and I had this idea to just start a community portrait project. Portraiture is really important to me. Um, so the whole idea with it is to um, be seen and feel seen. And the project started last year when every, everyone was um, staying home for safety. I did porch portraits. So I went door to door. I put the call up on a local Facebook group. I went on to next door and I just said, I'm taking a free portrait of your family on your porch. It's safe. I'm distanced. And I got... A lot of good responses and people were sharing it and um, families just signed up for free and I just did it. I went for it. I probably did about 40 homes. They're not on this little website that I've created just recently, um, but I'm continuing the project and I'm actually going to focus and it's kind of evolved. It's um, the project is now called This is Santa Ana, a, port a community portrait series. So every quarter there will be different themes. And so this quarter is all about family portraits on their porch still it's continuing um, for like summer, the summer theme. And so the idea was to bridge this project, sharing families on their porch with the kid friendly campaign to have an outdoor gallery experience where um, the families that are featured can share and invite other families and all come to see the outdoor gallery and then have an opportunity to gather from the parents and from the kids feedback on on what they see really gather information and um, in a survey feedback type form um, where they can share what they envision for a more kid-friendly space spaces in the city thank you carissa so what are the dates carissa what, that we're we've we're thinking um, I was thinking a Saturday, um, a Saturday evening, since it is an outdoor event. I know it's really hot in the summer. So I was thinking like 4 to 8 p.m. on a Saturday, like July 24th or 31st. Um, I know that Amigas was also planning, Lonnie was planning an event on the 24th. So we were thinking if it was the 24th, she could also drive traffic from her event to that event after. Um, and it would just be um, simple activities for children. I know Maria and I were talking about like bubbles or face painting, that little little things like that. Um, a little photo booth station, something like that. Um, and then a few other community members being able to share um, their initiative. So like the Kid Friendly Campaign would have a table. Um, I'm also part of an organization called Latinx Parenting, and she's a Santanera. She's born and raised in Santa Ana and is doing really good things. So she would share her organizations, and she's local, and she's focused. She has a huge um, pulse on families, local and, um, and otherwise. Um, so that's the vision. Okay. Th thank you, Carissa. Um, I'm going to have to apologize. I'm going to have to rush a little bit because I have to go to work. I have I'm running late. Uh, Magdalena, I, um, uh, Julie I th wanted to- th I think that was our last person, so you can probably, but I think there might be some comments from the public. I think I saw somebody wanted to speak. That was that was Julie. Julie, uh, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, go ahead, Julie. I have to go and, uh, to open up the store. I'm late already. <laughs> Do you okay. have a vice president that you can defer the meeting to, Raul? I, I don't know. Well, I like to I like to see I like to hear what you what you have to say, and then okay, uh, I'll be fast. Then I'll finish the meeting, and we, uh, we do have one other on. public comment, Raul. It's a um, L A M A C. I think it might be the it might be Sarah. Okay, I saw but, that one. Okay, uh, but go ahead, Julie. Okay, I. I I'm listening very, very intentionally to the comments. And okay. what we say and what we do has a direct impact on ourselves and on others. Um, Santa Ana is a very unique city. I grew up on Logan Street, so I know firsthand gangs, violence, that whole gamut. My parents still live here, my kids come to school here, so I get it. It's not something that exists in all other cities, and it's um, something that we have to work through. I would really encourage Santa Ana Business Council president and its members to continue to reach out to 
uh, elected officials at City Hall and the school board, because the word on the street with the school board nowadays is that, um, you know, that they they want to choose other other areas of the city and not just downtown Santa Ana. And so we want to make sure that we highlight the downtown as a great place. Um, I want to make sure that when we speak about downtown, that we, you know, speak the truth, but also highlight all the good things that we're doing. Um, Maria and Carissa just outlined all these beautiful and wonderful things that are captured throughout the city. Santa Ana Business Council, Downtown Inc., you guys do an incredible job, short-term, mid-term, long-term. It doesn't go unseen. And I know that there's been commentary about like City Hall puts up walls and they don't care. And they, that is so far from the truth um, that maybe that's like how you feel, but the government workers that I have interactions with think nothing but good about downtown. They don't think negatively. They don't think it's over amped. You know, they eat there all the time. They shop there. They love the events and the diners and the, the, the nightlife. Um, downtown Santa Ana is the only area in the city of Santa Ana that has dedicated police officers. And as of a few months ago, the police stopped charging Fund 27, which is the parking garage revenue. I think that speaks really highly of how the city values downtown. Downtown Santa Ana it also has, it's the only one that has a liaison. Nowhere else in the city does it have a liaison. The other thing is it's the only place with the bid. It's the only place with a public parking structure that charges. It's the only place with a clean and safe team. There's like so much that goes into it. And it's not because, you know, it, it, it's because there's support there. There's value there. City Hall sees the value in downtown. So I just hope that I can help convey and help you all see that it is something that is supported and desired and wanted and loved. Um, and I hope that we can continue to highlight the good things, um, work through the not so good things. Like I've heard you loud and clear, security, PD. PD responds to crime, illegal activities everywhere. And it's evident they're not charging, they're augmenting, they're dedicated. We have a new corporal. There wasn't a gap in service for the corporal. So let's just give a really special thank you to, to everyone that contributes, you guys included. But these officers, these are human beings that risk their lives for the nightlife, for special events. Uh, we're not testing. We're not. It, it's different. It's a different dynamic. Um, I agree with you. It's a lot of red tape. It's a lot of bureaucracy. And I think that's why they put a liaison in the downtown so that we can help navigate through that. And as we were meeting, the emails have been sent. I do want to just highlight a few things. The special event applications have been coming in like rain this week. Special application after application after application. I know because Bill McGovern forwards them to me when it's in the downtown. We've received over 10 this week. People want to come back to downtown. They want to have special events. The organizers want to come back. Maybe there's new organizers, Patchworks, Hente Market Night, Farmer's Market. You know, they had to find other places to continue because this is their livelihood. And the pandemic didn't allow for special events in the downtown or in the city. They found private venues. They found other venues where they could do it. And good for them. We should share the wealth. I'm pretty sure that they will come back. And if they don't, then wherever they're at, best of luck. And I hope they go well. I know that there's lots more that will come through. Um, I want to make sure that I give special thanks to the police because they do a lot and they realize how special downtown is. Um, the last thing is I wanna thank Santa Ana Business Council and Downtown Inc for everything that you guys do. It doesn't go unseen or unappreciated. It's very much appreciated. The work that you've done in the past and that you're continuing to do your long-term visions, it's, it's unlike anything else throughout the city. Lastly, I wanna let you guys know that Two owners have purchased the old city hall building, um, Judy and Frank Perez, and I'll be sharing more information about that.
Plaza Navideña is also an event that the city is going to be hosting. Thank goodness they found some money for that. And they would like to extend uh, that collaboration with Santa Ana Business Council and Downtown Inc. Um, and there's so much that's gonna come that's positive here to the downtown. I wanna make sure we highlight that story and that we work through the challenges rather than highlighting all of our challenges. When you guys ask for things or be specific, be concise, put dollar amounts. And when you get certain accomplishments and milestones, show gratitude and be thankful and invite the folks to come back for the, those positive events. I really encourage you guys to do that. And I think that that's a part that that might be, you, you, that could be improved overall. So thank you for letting me rant for a little bit. Um, that's Raul. okay, I appreciate Julie. It. You're very welcome, Julie. You know, everything you do also, it's appreciated, uh, uh, Julie, in the downtown. What I said, you know, what I said is that uh, after COVID and, uh, and, uh, and the way the business was last year and how much we were affected, um, and now with the surprise of the, the, the license fees, uh, it's not the right time. You know, we're just coming back. We're just coming back again, uh, back to normal, doing business and trying to bring people in the downtown, trying to do events to bring customers to the downtown. I just think that it's not the right time right now to increase those events uh, fees or license fees it's not the time right now. We should wait a little longer, even though it's it has been already approved by the council. But I still think that it's not the right time right now to do to increase. I agree that with you. I agree much. with you. Excuse me. I, I I completely agree with you. And um, again, to my my point, when it's things like this, Raúl, mm -hmm. be concise. Reach out. Please copy me so that I'm also an advocate and can provide assistance and guidance. Um, these things can be mitigated. They could be. I just think that we need to be focused and we need to focus on one or two things, accomplish them, and then move on or share the wealth. A few of you focus on two things, a few of you focus on the another two things, and then strategize on what you guys are going to accomplish and really show, you know, um, build those relationships because sometimes they're, you know, it, you attract more bees with honey. So we, you know, Julie, we, we do have the relationship with the, with the council. Uh, but, you know, the way I see it, it's that they, we should have been noticed. They should have told us about yeah. uh, raising and those fees. It, it's just too much. It, it should have been announced citywide. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't and even know. <laughs> like, that's and, a disservice. And it's not the right time right now, Julie. Um, a year from now, when things get back to normal, when all this, you know, all these projects that we have in the downtown, the trolley, the Toll Brothers, uh, the, the Norgate, all those projects are going to affect the businesses in the downtown. And, it's, and, and how are we going to do events when the, when the street is all destroyed? You know, that's my point that I wanted to say that, I, that it's not the right time to increase the fees right now. Because we're going to stop the, the we're going to stop promoters or people that want to do events. It's just too much the increase on the license permits. Uh, I'm can gonna. We, can I'm we gonna, take our public comment really quick? Uh, we have to. Who's, who's this, Mag, Mag, Magdalena? I'm not. I'm not sure. It, um, but there's somebody who wanted a public comment. And can you speak now? Oh, yeah, Sarah. It's Sarah. So Libromobile is actually Libromobile Arts Cooperative. We are an arts and workers cooperative. So that's what LMAC stands for, in case you all didn't know. Okay. Um, you can visit our website to, to learn what that means. But I just wanted to take a moment because I've had a really hard month trying to navigate these spaces that both the mayor and Julie have um, advised me to participate in. Um, you know, coming to the Santa Ana Business Council meetings, um, communicating with Downtown Inc., uh, and then also planning my events and surviving as a bookstore, right? So 
a lot of times people don't realize that we are a, a bookstore. Yes, we have a business front, but we are artists and volunteer workers. I have never been paid out of the bookstore. Um, a lot of our folks put in the time for free. Some of the folks get paid because they can't afford not to get paid and they're contracted workers. Everything we do for the community is free. You know, so whether it's our annual festival is free and we pay, part, we pay our participants um, and, or, or whether it's free writers, you know, programs like Body Writers who has been in Santana for 13 years. Now um, we've had Crear Studio since 2017 and Carissa, I would like to connect with you because Crear Studio can easily pop up and offer free um, art workshops to the community at your events. I'd love to be a part of that. You're doing great work. Um, and I'd love to include link to your project on our website. We totally 100% focus on local and black indigenous people of color and raising visibility for that in downtown. And I've had been planning my reopening since March. We are literally scraping money to keep ourselves open. Um, I had to invest money in, in sanitizing the bookstore. I had to invest money in, um, you know, creating it more family friendly because the no parking, no vending sign was very um, negative <laughs> written. So I hired a, lo you know, a local muralist to come and make it more family friendly, trying to do more stuff in the alley to make it more accessible and welcoming versus pushing people out. We have maintained our little free library for years now always offering free books. In fact, several folks who benefited from the Boca de Oro Little Free Libra Library Program came and got books from us for free. So with this all said, we were also overlooked and not considered for our reopening event. Um, and I have been pleading for weeks to you know, push pa patches and pins because it will drown out our event. I was even offered an opportunity by Mel McGovern to share the stage. He goes, would you compromise and share the stage with them? I said, yes, because it is very important for me to acknowledge the person that we are hosting as well as our reopening. And as of now, nothing's happening to collaborate. I am being offered other spaces other than my business. I was also told, oh, maybe you should take out a permit to host an event in my bookstore, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but then with all of this being said and done, I was also approached by someone in Anaheim to say, let's move you to Anaheim. Um, so for me, it's important that Libre Mobile stays in Santa Ana because I grew up here, right? This is my home. I don't have the privilege to say I was born here because my family is a long history of my migrating people. So we got here in the late seventies, but Santana is my home and the reason Libra will be continues to exist even when I'm not in the city is because it's what I want to remain. We all saw what happened to Libria Martinez and I don't want that to be the story. So that's why again, we are an arts and workers cooperative. Some of us get paid, some of us don't. I have never gotten paid. Everything I've done, whether it's planning events or making sure the store is open has been on 100% volunteer time for me. Um, if not, I've, if anything, I've invested in it. Um, but at this point, I, if, if we're not prioritized over some of these events like patches and pins or at least communicated with in advance, and I have put a petition into the, uh, to the mayor as well to change the way that permits are addressed. And I've been in full conversation with Bill McGovern over it too. You know, I'm gonna have to move. And right now my standing move out date is gonna be at the end of September. And it's gonna be because we're, we're not seen as a community resource and we're not supported through these processes, right? And all the events that we have lost have been events that have worked 100% with local businesses to engage us and also make sure that our needs are being met during their events. Patches and Pins was infamous for that because Delilah Snell knows what it takes to run a business downtown. You know, um, Hente Market too, we're the only ones that have ever come up to us. Uh, so I think what a lot of it has to do is that we have to nurture the folks who are putting in the time. And I am more than happy to continue these conversations outside of these meetings. But at this point, my decision is, it has to be now looking for a new place. And if Anaheim's going to offer me that, sadly, my hometown is going to lose the one thing I built for them. Thank you. Thank and, you for your also, um, I requested for these meetings to be accessible in Spanish, and that's not in the last meeting notes. 
And then just to address also the fact that when I am asking about equitable practices and transparency and accountability, I'm not attacking, I am asking for explanations. So it, I feel that that term was also used in a derogatory way. Um, and, I, and no one has responded to that email, so that's why I'm bringing it up now. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I'm going to end up the meeting right now uh, here. I have to go to work. Uh, thanks everybody for your time. Thank you for being on the uh, on the meeting. Uh, you're welcome to stay and keep, you know, talking if you want. Bye. I actually. <laughs> thank you, I Raul. Actually, have a great you. day. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you, week. Raul, Julie, Madeline, Kim, everyone. <laughs> I miss quite everyone that is there. Ryan, bye bye. Thank you for being in this meeting. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.